Halloween is upon us this week, and the psychology behind the modern-day Americanized Halloween holiday is fascinating. But it's also frustrating, because they took a tradition that was death-positive in remembering and celebrating one's deceased ancestors, and turned it into a death-negative, sugar-filled, sexy fireman cliché of a holiday. Now, as the Aussies watching will know, our country isn't that big on Halloween. Every year a few cheap plastic decorations are being sold in stores and no one really goes for it like they do in the USA for example. But it is slowly becoming more prevalent here with kids wanting to go trick or treating and parents wanting to get pics for Instagram. So today we're talking about the issues that this modern day holiday can bring up and what to do about it. Please like, share and subscribe if you find this video interesting. Now let's talk Halloween. Now I should mention that I don't care if you celebrate modern day Halloween because quite frankly in today's world anything legal that can bring a bit of fun and escapism is welcome. And the goth in me finds this time of year really good for buying home decor. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's an innocent holiday. And if you want to be all about death acceptance for yourself and others there are a few things to point out. So the origins of Halloween stem back thousands of years to the Celtic festival of Samhain which started at sundown on the 31st of October. The term Halloween is derived from the All Hallows Eve and the Catholic Church's celebration of All Saints Day and All Souls Day on the 1st and 2nd of November, which can be traced back to the 8th and 9th century. The Celtic festival is traditionally one of two days of the year where the veil between the natural and the supernatural worlds a drop, allowing for the spirits of the dead and the dwellers of the underworld access into both worlds. These otherworldly visitors were said to often play tricks on humans and have other mischief making fun. Many of the customs and beliefs associated with these festivals stem from older rituals and folklore that have been passed down through the generations. These include numerous rituals for predicting the future and customs of dressing up as something other at Halloween, which is still done today. But all these customs were grounded in celebrating and remembering their deceased ancestors and those beliefs in the supernatural were very real to the people of that time. Things changed though when the Irish immigrants left Ireland due to the potato famine and came to the USA bringing their customs with them, such as carving of vegetables and the mischief making of trick or treating. Now obviously this looked like a lot of fun to the American people so they joined in and as inevitably happens, because there were more of them, it devolved into what they thought it was keeping the superficial parts and leaving out the meaning behind it. As more immigrants from other countries came over the years, their customs were integrated into the holiday as well, such as the Mexican Day of the Dead. So when you know the backstory of Halloween, you can see why someone in the death acceptance community may be a little miffed about its current day version. With that said, let's look at that a bit further. Back in the day, this festival was about remembering your dead ancestors and dressing up in order to have fun playing with the dead and the supernatural who had come back from the night. Now it preys on your fear of the dead and the unknown. Vampires, zombies, mummies, all the dead things that are out to get you in the most grisly of ways. It's all very Hollywood. These things, particularly vampires, were very real fears for people back in the day before science could explain decomposition. Modern day Halloween and horror somehow manages to prey on that same fear for entertainment value even though we know better. And since we see vampires and zombies more often than we see an actual dead person, subconsciously we take on that scary vibe about death. Now if you are someone who has already worked through into death acceptance or if you're a history buff, these things probably aren't going to bother you all that much. You can enjoy and have fun with it all. But if you haven't, then this is just one more day in the indoctrination of death is bad and scary. Now many people will jump up and down and say there's nothing harmful about modern day Halloween and it's all in good fun. And this is where I get confused that the USA's woke crew haven't been jumping up and down about this, but I guess they are a very selective bunch. The theme of the haunted asylum and the escaped mental patient, does that not seem a bit off? There is a double standard here because the woke crew will happily jump up and down about getting offended for people with psychological illness, but when it comes to a psychiatric illness, that's a whole different story. You will not hear a peep out of them. Now as you can tell, I'm not a big fan of this crowd, but I bring it up for two reasons when it comes to death education. 
One, as a mental health professional, it is frustrating because it really does give the wrong impression of those with a psychiatric illness. And more importantly, it puts them in the same category as non-human creatures like vampires and zombies. And two, as a death educator who wants everyone to have a dignified death, it pisses me off that they are laughing at the horrific way these people have said to have died with no dignity or respect. According to the stereotype, their death was so horrific and traumatizing that they now haunt the living, no matter whether they think of them as historical characters or in the modern day. And since most people have never met someone with a psychiatric illness, this is really the only side of the story that they have, and apparently it's okay for them to die this way. If you're part of the death positive and death acceptance community, remember this is not okay. Everyone deserves a dignified good death. And if you don't know what the term good death means, check out our video on that. And now that I've said that, we're going to take these two things and give a message to parents for this time of year. A while ago, we did a video about talking to your kids about death. And in that, I mentioned to look for conversation starters. And Halloween is just that. They will be seeing decorations of tombstones, ghosts, skeletons, and other death-related items. And if you don't explain death to them, this time of year is just one of the many things that can lead to death anxiety, particularly in kids that are more empathetic and sensitive. But you can break the generational cycle of death anxiety by explaining it all to them. You don't have to go into the history of it all, although that's not a bad idea with older kids. But for younger kids who are at the shop staring face to face with a paper mache biologically incorrect skull, explain to them the fantasy of Halloween. Explain to them that it is made up and death doesn't look, or more importantly, act like that. Dead people are not out to get the living and answer their questions truthfully. <laughs> Halloween, even the modern day version, can be fun. But it's also a time when misinformed stereotypes and fears are played out for entertainment. If you have kids, be prepared to talk to them about what they're seeing. Talking about death is not one simple conversation, but many conversations over the years. And this is one time of year where there are many conversation starters. And for parents with death anxiety themselves, try to remember the positive history of Halloween and remind yourself that this is commercialization playing on your fears, nothing more. That spooky nonsense is not real death and death is not out to get you. With that, like, subscribe and go talk death.